Hello and welcome back. It has been a while. I'm very sorry. I just wanted to come on here with a quick little update. My health has been really rough. I've tried to film stuff and things, but I just haven't had the capacity or the energy to create videos to upload, unfortunately. Hasn't been a lot of fun, but hey ho. So situation now is that I'm working from my parents for a couple of weeks just to have a bit more support and general rest and already it's making a difference so obviously Miami Grand Prix is this weekend there should be a video up after I'm quite excited for this one and I will share some of my thoughts about do you know what I mean I think it's only it's only China that I've missed I think on that side so I'll share some of my thoughts about that and driver market updates etc Adrian knew me leaving huge moment. Otherwise I thought I'd share some of my recent reads. I've had a bit more time to read again so when I was packing I completely forgot that I was intending to bring these books home because it's just a general thing that I bring them so then I have more room on my bookshelf in Oxford and these are basically all books I've read apart from a few exceptions and I didn't so I'm gonna put pictures in. Firstly in this list sort of Easter time I read this book Our Hymns and Their Hymn Writers which is just phenomenal. I'm gonna be honest I picked it up because the cover is gorgeous and I'm so glad I did because it's just so inspiring but also just so interesting to get to hear the stories of these people who wrote such influential hymns and also just where they came from and real like human expression in songwriting with faith. It's just an incredible book, really faith building, so highly recommend. I read this book, We All Want Impossible Things, which is such an interesting exploration into grief, particularly it's about a friendship where one of them is going into hospice care and it's a whole exploration of, you know, the experience of going through hospice and what that's like. And so just like, trigger warnings because that could be a touchy subject for some people but it's so beautifully done and it just feels honest and raw and kind of intense emotionally but also just really really gorgeously done. These were both charity shop finds so I hadn't seen any one reading them but the covers were pretty and the blurbs interested me. The second one of those was the bookshop of the broken hearted which the girl in it is called Hannah so that was kind of the the cherry on top sealed the deal we're getting it it wasn't what i was expecting so it's sort of post world war ii set in australia and it's a it's a lovely book like i don't know how to it's it's quite touching it's cute just dealing with relationships and growing as people i don't know how i don't know how to explain it but yeah writers and lovers now this has been on my list for a while because jack edwards read it a while ago and I tend to just make a mental note of them and then if I see them in a charity shop I'm like it's Jack Edwards approved we're getting it. I forgot time was passing when I was reading this book I just inhaled it it was one of those I would like sit there and then like look up and two hours had gone by and I was like huh and I, I don't know why like something about the voice and the tone of the writing just really I really meshed with it's basically this woman in her I want to say mid 20s and she's not sure yeah it was like early 20s and she's kind of got to the point she's not sure what she wants to do in life and it's sort of working through that again there's a theme of grief in it and it's just her journey I guess in trying to work out what she wants to do and how to build her life back and yeah just the way it was written I guess it's like perfect sort of audience in a way and then the book I've just finished is Letter from New York by Helen Hanf so this is actually a series of radio broadcasts she did for BBC Women's Hour about life in New York. I want to say 1979 to 1984? 1978 through 1974. The thing that's so interesting about this book is just the detail she chooses to focus on and then how she interacts with the listeners and yeah, it's just, it's fun, it's lighthearted, it's a cool look at life in New York during that time period 
I may have read it for a particular reason. And I've just started The Beasting by Paul Murray, another one that was in my on my radar because of Jack Edwards and it won, I want to say the Booker Prize or was shortlisted or something. I'm trying to think if that was last year or the year before. It's won awards recently or been shortlisted for awards or something. And I saw it in a tarot shop. I didn't fully take in how big of a book it is. This is a standard book, almost 200 pages in. And I've read that quite quick. It doesn't have tons of chapters so far. So it is kind of, sometimes it's like, looking to see when the next chapter is because it's a bit intense. I'm kind of split. I'm intrigued by it and I'm enjoying that sense of it but I don't know if I'm actually enjoying the actual story. I don't know if that makes sense. It kind of is about this one Irish family you're finding that you're getting to see kind of the perspective from each of them. I can't really tell where it's gonna go and I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it but this is what we're currently reading. And I wanted to keep this brief, just a little update, explain why I've been absent, I will be back. This is the reality of living with a varied chronic illness and we're trying to learn to let that be what it is. Thanks for sticking around, like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff and I will see you on the flip side.